Welcome to the March 2021 meetup for Meet a Mentor. Um, I have about five minutes of program updates, probably not more than that, and then we'll launch into our panel. Um, we've got a couple of people here who are uh, similar to me, security adjacent, which is uh, kind of a, a thing that pops up every now and then, and we always wind up having some really great discussions about it. So I'm really excited to, to be hosting this panel. Uh, for program updates, uh, one of the programs that we have in progress at the moment um, that we're hoping to release within the next week or two is the resume review portion of the resume review and mock interview program that we're working on. Uh, so what this is going to look like is um, essentially a form where you submit a copy of your hopefully very redacted resume um, and uh, kind of give us an idea of what kinds of jobs you're targeting um, because that is something you should be doing with your resume. Uh, and then once that's submitted uh, within a week or so, uh, a mentor will look at it, kind of go by uh, a rubric that we're coming up with to give you feedback about your resume and then return that to you. Um, and the whole process will be done fairly anonymously so that um, everyone is kind of given a, a fair um, assessment from the mentors involved with this. So like I mentioned, we're hoping to roll this out within the next week or two. Um, after we kind of get through the first round of the resume review, uh, we're going to work on the mock interview section, which will be um, basically you'll be able to schedule a time slot, show up for kind of an interview with a, a sample job description and go through kind of a balance of soft skills questions, followed by some more technical questions, uh, and then receive feedback from two or three mentors. Uh, if you are a mentor and you're interested or actually, if you're a mentee as well, if, you, if you've been involved in the hiring process and would like to be one of the mentors that does uh, helps us out with the resume review, um, please let us know. You can PM me or um, just kind of drop something in the chat, tag me, something like that, and we can we can get you onboarded for that. We'd like to have a, a fair number of people because I expect that a lot of people are going to want to participate in this program. So if you're interested in helping out with that, uh, please let us know. And so I have a, a couple quick reminders. Um, I know, I think last meetup I said that I was going to close down the um, the mentor the mentor meeting rooms that I have in the um, mentor section of Discord, the open chat rooms. Um, I'm still planning to shut those down and I realized I totally forgot to do that. So I will be closing those within the next few days. Um, for your mentoring sessions, we recommend just using the private calling option in Discord. Um, so if you're just in a PM with someone, you can call them. It's more private. Uh, we had some some kinds of other plans for using the, the actual uh, room channels that we had, but those really haven't materialized. So we're going to close those down um, and just stick to the more private uh, Discord calling option. Or uh, Zoom, if you prefer, really up to you um, if you want to use them or not. Um, and then the other thing that I uh, mentioned in last month's meetup was essentially that um, we're recommending that the mentoring relationship kind of be based around the idea of roughly six months of mentoring followed by kind of a graduation or um, really the idea that you know goals are set in in order to be completed and at a certain point uh, you know you've benefited from mentoring you've benefited from being a mentor and you transition that relationship to uh, kind of you know a friendship or something like that. So I'm going to give everyone a gentle reminder to kind of take a look at your goals and see where you stand and start to think about uh, completing those or transitioning them or just assessing where you are and and uh, so that we can get through the rest of the uh, mentees that we still have uh, to be assigned to the mentors. So just a gentle reminder there as well. Um, last meetup, I put out a call for volunteers. I have at least one team pretty much assembled. I am working through the rest. It's just been a bit of a busy month, so I apologize. If I haven't reached out to you and you submitted the volunteering form, I will be in touch. Don't worry, I have not forgotten. Ironically, my own workload has made me a little procrastinate a little bit getting around to it, and that's kind of something I should be doing so I don't have as much of a workload. So um, it is definitely still in progress. And the form is still open too. So if you have interest in volunteering to help with some of the BTV be a mentor programming, um, there's definitely a lot of opportunity there. Um, you could definitely use some people that would be willing to help with the six month survey. And with the idea that I had last time for open office hours where we basically have mentors on staff that can kind of answer drop-in questions. So absolutely. Um, 
that that form is pinned if you'd like to volunteer just go ahead and check the pins and you can submit it and any any amount of help that you want to give is totally fine too i'm not expecting five or ten hours a week or anything crazy like that and then i think that's all the major reminders that i had that's it i'll scroll all to the side so um does anyone have any questions feel free to raise your hand and i'll unmute you and you can ask me some questions And not seeing any so far, so I'll take that as a good sign. All right, great. So, with no further ado, I'm going to ask my panelists to unmute themselves and turn the video back on. So, I've got, I think that's all of us. Yes, we're good. All right, um, so I'm gonna actually gonna take a breath and I'll take a sip of beer real quick. I've been talking a lot today and I'm completely out of breath. <laughs> so um, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, just call on each of you to introduce yourselves. So just a reminder to everyone, the panel topic is undercover InfoSec. Um, and it's essentially, uh, you know, a lot of us are in positions that are tangential to or tangentially adjacently related to security, but not technically in security. So I want to emphasize uh, with this panel topic that security is a mindset not a job description. So um, that's kind of the topic and the focus of this panel. All right, so let's do a quick introduction, about a minute each. And I'm going to start with Mr. Kate. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> hi, I, uh, I'm Kate. Uh, I work for a big security company out here in uh, San Jose, California. Um, I am a Salesforce developer. Um, so I'm helping the salespeople sell security products. That's basically uh, what I'm doing. Previously, I was working uh, retail in a grocery store. I went back to school late. So this is my, my first uh, tech position that, uh, that I've had. So that's, that's me, I guess. Cool, thank you very much. Uh, next person I'm gonna call on is Mark, Mark Morrow. Hey everybody, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm Mark Morzinski. I'm a program manager at Microsoft and I'm in the identity division. So we work on Active Directory, Active Directory Federation services, and I spend most of my time on Azure Active Directory. And um, I work with customers on their deployments of Azure Active Directory, and then I kind of take the we take the learnings and feedback and we work it back into the product for everybody else. Um, before that, I was a sysadmin running like Windows Tier 3, Active Directory, Exchange, the whole Windows, you know, the, that was the Windows person in a higher ed university, which has its own unique challenges. Very cool, thank you. Uh, next up, I'm gonna do Tall Wireless. I'm Tall, uh, I'm a network engineer uh, for a MSP ISP out of Chicago. Um, I primarily focus on network engineering stuff, um, but I try really hard to um, think forward about Security implement security implement uh, implications of what I'm designing, and trying to to make a first um, a first pass of that stuff. So um, I'm former of higher ed. I'm no longer very exciting. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. And then last but definitely wait. No wait. I'm actually on this panel too. Um, I'm going to call in the Vax next though, and then I'll go after him. Okay. Awesome. Um, the Vayox. Um, yeah. Other people know me as Clay. Um, I work for a security, cons security consulting firm. Um, um, I too used to work in higher ed. Um, and I lead our threat intelligence and our threat analysis teams. Um, and if your organization has an AD server that's been pwned, well, we might just get that call. Um, so we, and we, we do all sorts of things, um, red team, blue team, purple teams. Um, so I've been there for, uh, for a year and a half. So focused on InfoSec specifically for around five to six years. Um, before that, it was a little bit part of my job, and that's where I kind of fit in with this panel, where I wasn't actually, I didn't have that title, um, but I was still very active. So we'll get into some of those things later. 
Very cool. Um, I'm a techie. Uh, I also work in higher ed, funny enough, and uh, currently am an 0365 sysadmin, but I like security more than I like sysadmining at the moment. Um, and I'm actually going to be starting a new job that is in security. So I'm kind of in the in the process of making that transition. Um, but I have mostly um, a desktop support uh, and systems administration background. Um, obviously with OC65, um, I do have a active director experience since we're in a hybrid configuration. Um, so if you've heard like half I'm going around, that's kind of been part of why my week has been very stressful <laughs> or like the last week and a half or something, something like that. Um, so the, the whole idea of being security adjacent and uh, what you can bring to the table as an ops person or as you know a dev or anything else, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, cool. So that's us. So question number one, I'm going to direct this at Mr. Kate. And the question is, what got you interested in security? And how do you incorporate security into your role? Um, so I grew up right when personal computers were kind of getting big. Uh, I remember my best friend got a home PC when we were like 10, 11. And so we started trolling around on the internet and stuff and got into coding HTML and and then, uh, you know, I was 15 for 9-11 and then the Patriot Act happened and, you know, I'm an, a radical 15 year old. So I start caring about security and protecting my own information. And so that kind of whole thing is what spawned it. Um, and then I ended up, you know, not going to school for a host and a variety of reasons, went back later. And when you're a software developer, uh, Security is really important if you're use, dealing with any kind of data, uh, especially in, in my job, I'm doing uh, full stack work. I'm doing front end work, back end work, and I'm mostly on the front end, but that's when you really have to be careful not to, uh, Salesforce is a giant database. So I have to not allow people to just do injection attacks and get all of the information or delete all of the information. Um, it's just, a uh, it's something that any good coder uh, keeps it front of mind when they're when they're building things. Um, so especially working for a security company it would be really bad if if our uh, standards were really low. Definitely true. Cool. Anyone else want to jump in on this one too? You can say something if no one else says anything. Um, yeah. Since we do identity, I do identity, and usually that's sometimes a different team than the security team. We would have to go get approval from the security team that we're going to go do some of this cloud stuff. And then the answer that they always had was no, like you can't do it. So I started getting more into the security aspect of that because those are, that was the team that was always like kind of a blocker from people doing adoption of stuff. Yeah. And that's definitely something we'll be, we'll be talking about later on as well. I, I don't think there was really ever like a, point where I became interested in security. Um, I've always been, um, I mean, I've been dabbling in Linux since high school. I've, you know, been a sysadmin. I've been, a net, I've been doing networking. I've done research. I've, I've, I've covered the gamut. Um, but one of my first jobs outside of, out of college was as a wireless network engineer, um, which tangentially touches a lot of security related fields um, between identity and access management, between uh, encryption protocols, between, it, it, it just touches on so many things. And um, my, my, my thing that pulled me in was more that, <laughs> this is gonna sound awful, but I didn't like what the security teams imposed for me. And so my goal was to like understand what they were trying to ask and what they were trying to accomplish and then come up with a simpler way that made it easier for users to deal with. And so my goal is, my, my interest in security has been, I wanna provide services for people. I want them to be able to use them I want them to be secure and I don't necessarily want people have to add steps into things to do them. Right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of like complexity is the evil is evil and complexity just makes security harder. 
Um, and so I never really think of myself as a security person, but there's so much that I do that I'm like, is totally a security architecture thing. So, yeah. And I'll age myself a little bit with, with this story, but um, <clears throat> I started my career in academia and um, the place that I started in the department, um, I saw I was doing tech support and um, right down the hall was um, someone who ran the web servers and the DNS server and the mail server for the department. So back then, like it was very common for various departments to kind of run their own infrastructure. Um, and it was like, you know, the closet was like this little tiny server room. Um, so I got my exposure to Linux through that. And I started um, doing um, some computer programming on a project for a professor. Um, so that was awesome. Um, so I transitioned after like six months to doing that full time. Um, and we're sitting in, I moved to like his office there, it was just a closet basically with a couple desks and a bunch of old computers piled up. Um, there was a, a, a Samba von, or yeah, Samba vulnerability that was released and um, our colleague of ours had a Linux machine and you know, it was like, oh, let's see if this works. Um, sure enough, um, we got a root shell in about five minutes. So I was, yeah, I was sold ever since. So yeah, security was just part of the job at that point. We would devote like one day a week to patching all the things. Um, and back in those days, like Apache and PHP, we compiled all of that by hand and then kind of scripted that stuff out. Um, Yum wasn't a thing. So anyway, so I got a lot of exposure to all of those tools and um, services. Um, and yeah, I was hooked since then. Yeah, I love this. I, I mean, for me personally, I think I kind of started back in IT and I really wanted to like, I, I like making things easier. I think it's a sign of, it's a sign of a good programmer or a developer when you spend like four hours automating a task and it takes you five minutes but you have to do that task every day. So I, I um, actually started my grad program while I was still in desktop support uh, and got into programming. And from there, you know, I, I think like, I got interested in security primarily because when you learn how to program some cor something correctly, you also start to see between the cracks and you start to think of like all the different ways that you could do things, you know, and, and like, you know, when I say security is a mindset, well, hacking is also a mindset. It's not like, you know, hackers all do the same thing. Like obviously hacking is not a crime, all that kind of thing. And and really like, you know, if you're the kind of person that likes to like pull things apart and see how it works and then put it back together in a way that it wasn't supposed to be done before or wasn't designed to do, like that's kind of the hook right there. And that's what makes, makes you a hacker and not just, you know, someone who designs according to specification. So that's really what fascinated me about, um, about hacking and then security based on that. Um, and I think for me, um, I really started doing security in my O365 role because no one else really was. Like we kind of have this standalone um, infosec team that advises, but they don't do a lot of the actual like incident response necessarily. And no one else was really focusing on it. And you know, when you see a gap like that, it's if you're in a in a good company that's flexible, you're able to just basically jump in and someone's going to let you get away with it when it turns out that what you want to do is actually beneficial. So um, I basically got to like flex a little bit of, of muscle there, like saying, Hey, no one else is really, really digging into this. Like, you know, I've, I've gotten to like customize alerts um, based on very specific information. Um, I think Mark Morrow knows, like I've, been, I've worked a lot with um, O365 and Azure logs to like, to, to really drill down and see like, hey, we're missing a bunch of stuff and you know, what can we do better in this area? So that's kind of how I've inserted security into my role. It's just kind of focusing on that and, and making it something that is not a burden to anyone else and getting people to recognize that value. So something I wanted to, uh, to, to, to quickly add is um, I just had deep thoughts about my high school career, uh, <laughs> which is always scary. 
Um, but what I what I realized is is that um, I've actually been surrounded through my like IT upbringing and mentorship by a lot of people who were security conscious and just taught me the right way to do it to start with. And so like I was hashing passwords for PHP applications just because that's what you did, not because you don't store pass like it it was never that, that that that's basically how my entire upbringing has been um but the other thing i wanted to mention is you'd be surprised how interested you get in security when no one else is doing it it's so true that is so so true it's really annoying <laughs> i'm the guy who sits in the room it's like are we really doing that like really <laughs> Oh, that's a really good point. We'll, we'll definitely be uh, doubling back over to, to that point later on. I almost said circling back and then I stopped myself because I'm not that corporate. <laughs> so I'm going to pivot to the next question, speaking of terminology. Um, so I one clarification I want to make about the, this panel too. Um, one of the things I really want to stress that's, that's really important to consider is that if you're interested in security, you do not need to be aiming for security role. You know, like, like I said, security is a mindset, it is not a job description. And I think that sometimes gets a little trampled over. Um, we have tons of people that are interested in transitioning into security, but you can be invested in it and still really thrive and enjoy in roles that are adjacent. And just bring that knowledge in, bring that passion in, and strengthen your own position where you are. Because honestly, for security teams, having, you know, ninjas and undercover infosec people, it's a huge asset. Uh, and yeah. I, I've been told that so many times before, so I really want to stress that point. And with wanna... that, I'm going to actually pivot to the next question. So go for it. <laughs> but don't worry, I, I have the feeling that you're going to get plenty of chance to to talk about this and like probably the question afterwards. So hang tight. Um, so the next question I'm going to direct at Mark Morrow, and that is, what operation skills do you think are most useful for supporting or or, or even transitioning into security? Yeah, I mean, I think the, yeah, I mean, I, th I think there's no real difference, honestly, in like operations and security, like good operations is good security. And that's where stuff has to kind of start out with. Um, I thought where uh, they were, the other person was going was like, there wasn't like a security thing you could do like 15 or 20 years ago, like you were a network admin or a sysadmin or whatever, and then something bad happened to you that usually caused you to have to like go learn the security thing. That's where I thought you were going with that thing. Not that you were the bad thing that happened to that box. I thought like something bad was going to happen to that department, which is usually what happens. So I think the good operations is like kind of the first bridge in that. So like, let's say you run something that isn't like core to the security team, like making sure your logs are super clean and they're going into the right systems. And like you pick up weirdness that's happening in your, your area of environment, because like, is that something that's, just this misconfigured thing that we'll get to like when we get to it, which is almost never, or is like someone doing something bad in your environment and that's how you caught it, right? So I think anytime you think about stuff that way is an easy way to kind of do that, to get involved with the security team and say, hey, I don't know what you all see on your side, but I'm seeing this weird thing happening in my thing. Like, what do you guys see? And that's a good kind of bridge to get into that type of stuff. But I mean, like back when I was doing it, there wasn't, there's not like a, there was not really a security team. It was like the network guy did the firewall. Like that was the security team, right? There wasn't like a security team. Yeah, no, I think that's really important. And honestly, when I think of like operational skills that, that support um, and that you can really play up for transitioning into security is like, like really what Mark's getting at is like, you have to actually understand the data. And there are a lot of security teams out there that aren't going to have the same in-depth knowledge of like, for example, O365 logs that uh, myself as an O365 sysadmin knows. So being able to really dig in and know what normal behavior looks like and help help them in an incident filter out what's actually normal, that is an incredibly important skill. And you know, if you do decide to transition into security, you know, bringing that kind of knowledge with you is it's really valuable. Yeah, there's like nothing worse when you're trying to troubleshoot like uh, like security incident and then like the logs have like all this like random garbage in it and the person's like oh yeah that thing's always going off like that it's like fix it someone fix this thing so i think if you own this stuff like there's a lot of value in you can bring for that like fix your stuff 
right? I mean, like, I just I, know it. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, I troubleshoot like ADFS stuff and the thing is just like spewing errors. And it's like, oh yeah, there's this thing that's always like, it runs every 20 minutes and it does the thing. And like, we never get around to fixing it. It's like, that makes it so much harder to find stuff. Like fix your thing. And like that good, so good operational security or good operations is like good security. Like, that's like fundamental security to, to me anyways. Yeah. yeah. The, the one thing, the one thing I'll add to that, uh, being someone who works in operation, like hardcore operations, um, is, you know, the amount of incon if, the amount of inconsistency in configurations, the amount of inconsistency I see in logging practices, the amount of inconsistency I see in all sorts of stuff, is astounding, and what is baffling to me sometimes is the people who work in operations don't seem to understand that by making all that consistent, it makes their operational job easier. Like something went down. Um, I need to troubleshoot something like just not even security, not even security related. The security related stuff is all icing on the cake. It's all benefit add. Right. And so you, that's all I got. <laughs> Keep your operations clean. Yep. I'm trying not to dive into the next question too hard. <laughs> I'm actually going to, um, I want to call out um, the Vayox clay on this because I know you have a ton of operation system or operational experience. So like, I want to know, like, you know, when you transitioned into security, what that you had dealt with before that you learned before, what did you find the most useful to, to, uh, to fall back on and to to use yeah that's that's a great question and that's a really good point that that mark mentioned um earlier and and um i should have gone there because that it's absolutely true like when something bad happened we were the ones that were taking care of that um and so that was such a good learning experience just being thrown into the fire and learning as you go and you know the more you see the more the more you learn and the better you are to identify in um, badness in the environment or potentially leading to the root cause. Um, so yeah, and I was a system administrator for a number of years, primarily Linux and Solaris machines. And yeah, configuring the firewall, that's part of it. Um, um, services, making sure they're up to date, making sure they're locked down, only certain people accessing those. So yeah, there's all of that stuff. There's so much security around it that, um, you know, since I was already interested in that topic, I was, you know, always paying attention to those details. So, and that's such great experience to draw upon. Um, having a solid IT background, especially that you can speak to in an interview, whew, that's gold for, for anyone wanting to transition into info, InfoSec. Um, or even just, you know, that kid that in high school was, you know, tinkering and built their own machine and did this out or the other, um, you know, maybe doing some like game hacking or something or like, wrote a Lua script to whatever, you know, get more tokens in the game or something. Um, all of that, being able to speak to that is incredibly useful. And that's really, that's really it. Like sharing your experiences and being able to talk about what you've been interested in and what you've learned and how you've gone through that process, that, that goes a long way. Very cool. Um, I want to throw in one more. My, my own commentary here is really, um, I, I mean, I think if anyone is in an IT position and, and either wants to be a better resource for their security team um, or transition into security at some point, um, I mean, honestly, like I said before, kind of knowing, knowing your craft really well and being able to support security in an incident by, by helping them dig into the areas that they might not know as well, it's it, that's hugely valuable. Uh, and the other things I want to throw out there are like, you know, in pretty much any environment you go to, they're going to have some kind of um, 
some kind of active directory. So that is is a crit, kind of a critical um, a critical component to understand, um, as well as networking. Like I would say that those two things um, are going to absolutely give you a bit of a leg up. Having a little bit of programming, like a little bit of Python, some Bash, yeah, you got, um, you PowerShell, script something, script something, script yeah, one of those, yeah, yep, yeah. And I, I know you absolutely agree with Active Directory too, and that includes Act, Azure Active Directory. Yeah. Uh, well, when we interview on the Active Directory team, we expect you to know some Active Directory, yes. But uh, no, I think that's like you need to know, like you need to know IAM of some kind, right? Like access management is like something you need to know either on the dev side or on the system side. You need to know networking. Probably should know like some DNS in there, and you have to kind of know how to script, like at least PowerShell, Python. I don't care what it is, but like you got to know that type of mindset. Like those are core for anything. Yeah. And you know what, even if there are companies out there that don't know it, they're going to have some kind of equivalent or they're going to be working towards it uh, or they're going to appreciate the, the kind of um, the, the applicability of that, that type of skill. So if you're looking for like, you know, actual skills that you're going to put on a list to learn. Yeah, I would absolutely put those in there. All right. Uh, so I think I'm going to roll to the next question, which I'm going to direct to Tall Wireless. And I know he's been gnawing at the bit for this one. Um, how does having a security mindset while in an adjacent position affect your relationship with your company's security team? And do you align with them more or do you conflict because of a difference in area knowledge related to your role? This is such a loaded question. <laughs> I wrote it just for you. I know. Um, so I think, I think it, I think it, it depends on the organizational structure. Um, I'm going to speak more to my previous organizational structure that I worked at at my previous job because, um, it works more for this example, because I haven't interacted with my new InfoSec team at my new job because it's a single person, but, um, yeah, whole different conversation. Um, but the, the major thing at my previous job was that the security team um, didn't really have teeth and really uh, worked with other groups in the IT to like implement things, right? And every now and then they would come to us with, um, we need more data, we need more something, 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 we need to block this, we need to do that, right? And they would put basically the way I thought about it is they would put forth requirements and then we would be responsible for implementing them. Um, and that can be both a good and a bad thing, right? Um, but the thing, I think that there, there were two major things that kind of got in the way between us, which were I'm the one who has to operate it, <laughs> right? And I'm the one who has the knowledge of the thing that you're asking me to deploy, right? Um, and so I think a lot of the conflicts that happened were around, you're asking for A, you're not telling me what you're actually trying to accomplish, which might be like A prime, right? And so we're going to deploy A and it's going to increase my, my operational overhead by like 30%. But if you told me that you were trying to accomplish a prime, I could implement it in a different way and only increase my operational overhead by 5%, right? Um, and so there was a lot of conflict around that kind of thing. Um, someone recently posted on Twitter, uh, the annoying thing about working with information security teams is that they walk into the room, they drop these requirements and then walk out of the room and take no responsibility for any of the tickets that come in afterwards. <laughs> um, it's 100% true uh, because information security comes in and says, hey, networking team, we need to put a firewall in front of the, in front of the, at the border. And they don't have the networking experience to handle troubleshooting or to handle trouble tickets or to handle like the operational teams for those areas end up taking a huge burden of that without, you know, always thinking about what that operational burden will be. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I think 
will also apply here is I think we both, I think both me and the security teams aligned on a common end goal. We vastly differed on how to get there. <laughs> right. Um, and I think, I think that comes from, from two spaces. One, I have operational knowledge of the thing you're trying to change. And I have operational knowledge of how people are using it. I have operational knowledge of how the data flows. I have like, right. And you don't, or you don't have a complete picture, right? So I can take what you're asking and apply it. It doesn't look like what you're asking, but it still accomplishes a prime, right? Going back to that whole a prime, like tell me what you're trying to accomplish here. Don't try to tell me how to do it. I think that's um, a really great point. I really do. Right. Um, and, and, and as I said in my intro, a lot of the conflict that we had was over over complication of security systems and protocols, right? Um, because someone, <clears throat> gonna put a giant asterisk in front of this. This is based on my perception of me interacting with the information security team, but not on the actual reality in giant asterisks. Um, is there, the information security team is trying to solve a very narrow problem or they're trying to look at a very, like they've got a very narrow cluster of problems that they're trying to solve. And it might be my brain, it might be my position, but I was taking those looking at a grander scheme and trying to look at the whole system and trying to look at the whole network and trying to look at where we, what, what do you wanna do in five, three years? What do you wanna do in two years? What can I do now to make that happen? But they're just so concentrated on the fact that this one AD was exposed. And I'm like, okay, that's great. I understand, I'm with you, it's bad. But what can I do to in, in the next six months to make it so we don't have this problem again, right? Yeah, um, and that's where the, the operational, like having right. the operational knowledge Allow, would allow right. you, if if possible, to kind of bring right. that practicality to the table. Right. Um, I will say that probably more of my security related arguments and fights were with other security adjacent people <laughs> who did not understand what they were talking about. That um, never happens. I'm, it never happens. It never. Why would it ever happen? Um, I'm just going to say right now, IPv6 is fine, and public IP addresses are fine. I'm uh, just saying. <laughs> yeah. Do I sense a fight a about it? <laughs> there's a bunch of fire surrounding you right now. It's fine. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, that, that brings up a really good point, though, and it's about communication and collaboration and you know no one should just have a bunch of requirements dumped on them and then like that's that like make it make it happen like there should be there's a, it should be a conversation right especially since this is an ongoing process um there it's there is no destination in security it's just an ongoing process so even more reason why there, there should be, it should be more conversational and, you know. See, and that's the kind of relationship things. that I actually have with, with the security team in my current job. Um, because anytime that, that we've run into something where there's a thing they want to do, we have such a good relationship that they'll check in with me when the idea is just starting. And then I can help guide the, like, here's what this looks like in practice. And actually, I think this question was kind of interesting because you know, I, I aimed it at tall wireless, but um, actually, Mark, you mentioned a little earlier that like part of the reason you got interested in security was because of your relationship with the security team as someone who works in IAM. Yep. So yeah, totally relevant. Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing that tall wireless kind of bringing up too, I think is um, 
you know, this, the security team has their own agenda and goals and things like that. And I used to always joke like, they're like, oh, you know, here is, you know, you bring some control to them and they're like, I don't like this rock, bring me another rock. And you're like, well, what don't you like about this rock? And they're like, bring me another rock, right? So you, you get into that kind of a thing. But I think one of the things when you bring stuff to them, I think you have to, you know, they're trying to implement some sort of control or whatever. You have to explain to them, this is the operational cost that that control has. And here are the other ways we can also implement this control that the operational cost isn't as high. I think that's kind of what Tall Wires was getting to. The other thing I think you have to keep in mind is like, what is the, what is the business, what's gonna to happen to the business process and the business risk, right? Like no one's doing security for fun. They're doing it to support the business. And I have customers that I work with where like, if we can't get this thing to work and it's gonna block core business processes, their answer is from the business is turn off security because it doesn't matter. Like, because the, if this doesn't work, the business doesn't, won't be here. Like we won't, this is a revenue generating thing if we don't do this, we don't make money. There's, this company doesn't exist. So turn off the security, right? Like that's the ultimate goal. So I think you always have to have that mindset too of what does this do to the business operation and process? And that has to be in your thing when you engage with the security team is like, this is how we're going to enable the business. And if you do it this way, this is bad for the business. Can we do things another way? Because most of the time it's not because they're malicious. They probably don't have that same in-depth knowledge of that area that you do. So they don't even know that the thing you're proposing is a choice, right? So you can be like, well, if this is what you're trying to get to. I can help you do it this way. Does that meet your requirement? Because I have more knowledge in this domain, in this application, in this area than you do, because you're maybe a generalist security person that's doing other types of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So Mr. for me, Kate. I was oh, gonna go say for, for me as a developer, it's actually kind of because I was I'm gonna ask you. I was gonna say I feel like this is like developer I, like area, right? Like on this. Well, topic. well, because I'm working on Salesforce, so I'm on the IT team technically, but my teams are siloed because we're just doing Salesforce work. We don't. I've never had to interact with the security teams. I know there was a team developing a mobile app, and they did because they were doing Google Calendar integrations within Salesforce and all this other stuff. But for me, it's you know. Every few months, I get the next release of Salesforce is going to be coming down and they hand out, these are the new security features. This is being disabled. This is what we're doing now. You need to change all of this stuff. So that's why it's really important to be security minded from the beginning. So you don't have to go through this gigantic amount of legacy code that exists that's been built and look for every instance where somebody hard coded a URL and it's HTTP and now Salesforce isn't going to let that go anywhere. Or credentials. Yeah, yeah, credentials. All that they luckily that was all taken care of before I started. But it's it's for me, it's about thinking about what's going to come down the pipeline and making sure I'm doing everything in a way that's secure now, so I don't have to worry about rushing to fix something later. Yeah, that's a really good point. And and the the funny thing is that makes me think of like so um, my grad program is for computer science, and like there's a lot of um, a lot of people kind of getting into the DevOps space. And like one of the things they always say is like shift left for the, the sec portion of DevSecOps. And that's like, you know, you want to integrate security as early in the pipeline as you can. And that starts with the developers. So if you're a developer and you're already security minded, then everyone's got a head start and everything is going to go easier. So it's a huge benefit to everyone to just get on the same page a lot earlier. Totally. I, I I want. I do want to say one thing um, to all of the vendors and 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 service developers out there who are not going to be watching this on YouTube, um, but I want to make sure it's like firmly planted in you know cyberspace. Um, more stuff needs to support the Acme certificate protocol, hardcore. Uh, real Learn quick, something from Tall every day. It's a automated, uh, it's a protocol for doing certificate rotations and certificate retrievals. Um, it's another one of those operational things that like, rotating certificates is a pain. Anyway. I have like one server I, I have to, um, I actually have to RDP into and like no one rotates these certs and it's really a big pain in the ass. <laughs> and I just, I don't have the, I don't have the, the willpower to possibly go yell up some trees about it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, <laughs> you got to pick your fights, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you got to make sure when you're, I mean, that's the other thing too. Like when you, if you come to your security team, like, hey, I think I found something, lay out what you found, why, and what the risk is, right? If you bring every like little thing to them, it's like chicken little. It's like, okay, I don't know. And then like, they're going to miss the big one when you bring it to them. 
but I think most security teams are just overworked, just like us on the operation side. And, you know, you got to, the more pre-work you can do to like, here's what I saw, here's what I thought was happening. This is why it's suspicious to me. Here's the risk. What you can, do you guys want to take it from here? Or how can I help? That helps, I think, them engage more versus like you fire off like the like super long threads. I don't get those where it's like, hey, what do you think? And the thread is like, you know, 700 emails deep or whatever. And you're like, I don't know, like what it takes you like 20 minutes to like to follow the thread to be like, okay, what was your question, right? But those things where you can make people's life easier, I think is how, you, I think that's probably more appreciative than most. most yeah, people. and that definitely I, goes both I, ways. I will, I will, I will say one thing. Um, uh, maybe this makes me a red teamer. I don't know. Um, but I have totally used the InfoSec team to accomplish operational problems. Oh my God, me too. Um, where, and I think I have a probably a 50% success rate with it, which I think is a pretty good success rate. I have like, like gotten I, more logs into Splunk by yelling up that tree and it's great. Well, like I've, I've totally like brought up various security patching and security vulnerability issues um, with the security team in an effort to get like, I can't get my own team to do it. So I'm totally going to loop the security team in, make them aware of it so that they put pressure on the team to get things done. Yep. It, we, every time totally we have, have a panel, that. every time we have a panel, soft skills come up and, and building relationships between teams come up, comes up. And it's oh. like, you, you like, if you, when you form that kind of connection, you can leverage it for all kinds of, of purposes. And it's going to benefit everyone. So I do I'm, it all the time. I'm going to actually roll this into the next question and, uh, and, and shift to more of like the, the skills and stuff like that. So the next question I'm going to throw at the Bayox. And this one is for someone planning on transitioning into a security position, what would you recommend they highlight in their resume and during interviews? Love this question. <clears throat> um, highlight all the things, right? <laughs> like um, to, to uh, specifically call out a few, um, if you volunteer, even at the blue team village, like highlight that, put that on the, on your resume. It's something, it shows that you're taking initiative to actually be part of the InfoSec community, right? Like talk about what you've learned. Um, talking about that during the interview, that's, you know, they're going to learn about you and what you've learned. And that's, that's great. Like just having that one line item, you know, you can't write, you know, a, you know, a paragraph about that, talk about that, right? That gives you more to talk about and sharing your experience, making it personal um, during the interview. Projects is another thing. Not That could be a struggle for people to find though, um, especially if you're say not into programming or scripting at all, um, but look for those opportunities, ask around. Um, if there are any topics that you've dug into and learned more about, speak to those, right? If you wanna get into InfoSec, then just do it. You know, like you, you need to learn, right? You need to acquire some knowledge, pick a topic. Networking is a great one. Um, Wi-Fi security is a great one. Um, you know, get involved with Participate when you go to conferences, do CTFs, um, and share those experiences during your interview. Talk about, say, oh, yeah, hey, I went to, you know, DEF CON and, you know, went to this village and did this CTF thing. And these are all the things I learned. Like, put that on your resume. Like, that is really super valuable information. Um, yeah, and just... Share, share your experiences, share your stories, um, your passion, your, all of that stuff will come through as soon as you start talking about it. I'm actually, I, I actually want to throw a reply in here because uh, I've been now security adjacent for a number of years and, um, and in a couple months I will actually be transitioning into security uh, and in a, in a fun capacity. And um, so a couple of things that I've done before. So I've applied to, I applied to like one security position a couple of years ago. And then, um, you know, obviously again, 
this time recently. Um, and one of the things I actually did was in my resume, um, for each for the most two two most recent jobs, I actually had a section that was um, like relevant projects or or something like that, where I actually highlighted security focused things that I did in my current role. So when I was desktop support, I helped with the rollout of um, shared LastPass accounts so that people would stop sharing their personal passwords, which is really bad. Um, and then also like said that you know I was really involved with. Um, you know, adding Mosey to the to our list of services and, and getting um, good backup and encryption processes with File Vault as well, because I dealt with a lot of Macs. Um, so little things like that, you know, um, there are a lot of things that you do in the course of, of your operations position that can be very directly related to security. And if you are applying to a security job, you know, you really do want to absolutely highlight those. Um, and then the other the other thing I think is also really important is just just networking and building relationships, um, you know, within the security community, with your security team, and uh, in in whatever your capacity you're able to do so. Yeah, absolutely. I just I should have mentioned that, and I'll re reiterate that. Um, if you're interested into in security, just make it as much of a part of your job as you can. And just be mindful of those opportunities and seize them and make note of them on your resume as well. And that just gives you more, more things that you can talk about. And I, I understand not everyone has that opportunity to do that, depending on where they are. But if you do, like, yeah, load it so up. I, I I actually uh, I have a I have a follow up question on this one. We're gonna have an in, interpersonal or interpanel follow-up question. Um, for someone who's transitioning, let's say, from network engineer into security or from developer into security or from system into security or from, from one of these areas, right? Is it, is it worth like highlighting those areas that they have base knowledge, like really good base knowledge in because i can imagine as someone who's security adjacent um like it would be great to have someone on the infosec team who has a background in network engineering but is focused on the infosec side or as a system in someone has a pretty hefty system in background but is now like is that something that team that like hiring managers and security teams are looking for and are trying to highlight and how should someone might how should someone highlight that on their resume yeah that's a great question it depends on the position i think largely really it, if you're a lot of that translates to ir and forensics right like being able to i to uh to get into the nuts and bolts of networking and how it works and um, being able to analyze traffic and traffic flows like that is super valuable. Absolutely. And that's just might just be part of your job that you might not think that much about. Um, so I think it's largely in part depends on the position you're applying for. Um, but even yeah, including all of that stuff is super valuable. I mean, that's it's that simple. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a kind of a balancing act because, you know, I as someone with an O365 system and background applying for a position where I really wanted to to transition to cloud security, like there were definitely certain things that I emphasized over others, and, you know, it, I. I put down basically my my current position as Azure O365 system in, and that carries along with it some base expectations about what I'm able to do. Um, but the emphasis is on like the connection between those two things. So I would do something like, for example, I put like, um, you know, analyze Azure AD logs in Splunk and build dash dashboards and alerts based on that. So that's a combination of, you know, a security focused tool, Splunk, with um, the content that I deal with as an O365 sysadmin. So I would hope that anyone reading that can kind of see that like, 
This is a security fo focused application of what I already do as a sysadmin for O365 and Azure. Um, and it's really hard to tell, it's hard to do because, you know, we all know that resumes are hard to write and getting past an HR screen is hard to do. So, you know, finding the right balance is it's a huge challenge and there really isn't any right or wrong answer because it depends on the job that you're applying for. If you read a description and they they want skills like Splunk, like obviously you want to put that in there if you've if you've uh, dealt with it before, even if you haven't dealt with it as something uh, that's specifically a security tool for you. Half the Splunk work I do is actually focused on mail routing. It's actually not focused on even O365. Um, that's a component too, but like you know, I I don't specifically write security alerts except that I leverage the alerts that I, you know, that I do create to like achieve security purposes. So it's, it's always going to be this, this kind of balancing act. Uh, and hopefully when we have the resume review program up, you know, we'll be able to, to kind of offer some advice about how to, um, how to address that. Um, hopefully that's the case. Yeah. I mean, I would say, I, I've seen a lot of resumes uh, over the last 10 years, but I would say a couple of things. One, if you have, a blog or some GitHub type of thing where it shows like stuff that you're communicating and writing. That's like really helpful. Um, I would say don't put anything on your resume that you do not want to be asked about. <laughs> so true. I've had people put down that they're an expert in Active Directory or, you know, some of these new modern authentication protocols. And I'm just like, okay, cool. Tell me the difference between SAML, OpenID, Connect, and OAuth, which they claim they're an expert in and they, they can't, an like, I mean, they can't even say this, right? So like, if you lie on your resume, that's like an instant no hire for me. Um, I'm less inclined that you like can memorize a bunch of like switches and stuff like, oh, nmap dash this, this, that. Like, it's fine. Like we can look that up. Like I'm more interested in how you think about problems, how you learn new skills. Like I'll throw out some random thing and I will ask. So one of the things I used to do, I don't really interview for this anymore, but I would ask a very generic problem. I'd be like, okay, no, uh, people can't log into Active Directory. How do you troubleshoot it? And I just want to hear how they think through the problem and say, well, is it one person or is it everybody? And I'll be like, oh, um, it's every, like, I'll just start making stuff up based on what their questions are. And they'll go, uh, oh, uh, is, is it DNS? And I'll say, okay, well, what did you it's want to know It's always DNS. It is always DNS. I'll say, but what when do you want to know? It's DNS? never DNS. It's never DNS. <laughs> it's always say, DNS. What do you want to know? And they'll go, oh, I want to know if this record's there and this stuff. Because I want to see what they're thinking about. And I'll go, yeah, they're, they're, they're fine. I, I just kind of keep closing doors on them to kind of see how they would troubleshoot the problem. There's no right answer to that question because it could be 5 million things, which is like everything in IT, right? So I'm, less, I'm more interested in how you think about a problem and how you troubleshoot stuff and how you learn new skills than it is like, I know all of the switches for this thing and like I can do this thing in Hashcat. It's like, we can use the man page and just look it up too. Like I don't, I'm, I'm less interested in that like nerd trivia, more like how you think through problems and how you learn new skills. Yeah. Definitely. I'm going to actually uh, pick on Mr. Kate because I haven't heard your voice in, in a hot minute. Um, so if you were going to transition to security, no, you know, not assuming you want to or you don't want to, what would you put on your resume that would highlight that experience? Ooh, right now, uh, right now, I would need to actually start working on some projects and stuff and refresh some skills from school. <laughs> <laughs> pick up my uh, pick up my Wireshark skills again from my networking class and my InfoSec class that I took. Um, but uh, right now, uh, you know, I would talk about uh, specifically right now for me the front end projects that I've been working on and what I've been doing to be mindful of security with those. How I'm pulling the data from back in uh, on the server side to make sure that I'm protecting it from from any kind of, of bad actors. That's that would be the biggest thing that I would include right now. Um, on that. And I would also say like with resumes, it, it, the skills that you put on there are, are good and important in the projects, but the, the formatting and making it readable can sometimes be just as important because my resume was not as nice as a lot of people's, but it looked really good. And so it got somebody's attention. And that's how I got the interview that I got for the job that I have now. Oh, you are not so, wrong. <laughs> yeah. So on that, uh, the job I have now, I just got, and, uh, What's really hilarious is that one of the interviewers told me post getting the job that my resume was awful and that he was going to throw it out if my friend had not called him and been like, hire this guy. What's hilarious is, is the friend who called him is the one who told me that my resume looked great. Oh, that's a bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's actually, so one of the things we, we, uh, 
we kind of hammered out in the resume review uh, template that we're going to be um, using as part of this, this program we're, we're unrolling is, uh, is actually like, it is about like, things being aligned and things looking aesthetically pleasing and the eye being able to go to the information that it needs. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, I have, it's super important. Yeah, I have several LaTeX resume templates if anyone's looking for a resume template in LaTeX. I think I, mine's in Word. Uh, I think I can, I think I might be able to dig it up. It's somewhere. Yeah, anyone feel, feel free to like PM me if you're interested in, in doing or helping with the resume review stuff, uh, definitely definitely could use the, the more the merrier I'll say that <laughs> um, so I'm gonna roll into the next question because I want to keep this somewhat brief ish um, and I'm gonna shoot this one back to uh, back to the Vayox. this one is what are some of the ways relationships between security teams and security adjacent people can be improved lots and lots of beer <laughs> Um, no, seriously, there's look for ways to to collaborate and connect. Um, I am very much into networking and um, Wi-Fi stuff and, um, you know, crafting packets and seeing what happens. And that just led to a natural friendship that I was able to develop with Tall um because that's what he does right like that's the you know we infosec and networking i mean it's a per, it's like a perfect marriage it really is um but um a couple positions ago what what i was wanting to do was get into infosec specifically so i looked for opportunities where i was at um to collaborate and to engage with infosec people and there was a reading group that i found that worked out really well and i started to meet infosec people from across campus um there was a special interest group that was you know focused on security i started attending those um I started presenting at those, well, you know, a few times. So that also helped me build my presentation skills a little bit. And um, so all of that um, has led to some great friendships, a lot of learning opportunities. Um, and uh, yeah, I would just recommend those sorts of things. And yeah, that, that's totally networking stuff right and like yep. years ago i was like growing up in my 20s i was like Ugh, i'd hit i'm not one of those like people that like would go to a conference and network but because well the conferences at that point in time for me were like very corporate um and so it's a completely different environment than you know like a b-sides event um, yeah. or defcon I... for that matter so go ahead tall Oh, I, I will say on the, the networking side, the non-computer networking, the people networking side, um, from the conference perspective, conferences are what you make of them. Um, yes. Right? Like, I've up until my first DEF CON two years ago, three years ago, two years, three years, I don't know. I've lost count. Um, I had only gone to corporate conferences, but I am an extroverted, I'm going to ask everyone the same question person, and networked with everyone. I sat at a different table every day, the whole night yards. Anyway, um, the one thing I want to add, so 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 the Viax and I have actually worked on a couple of projects together um, for various CTFs and um, we actually worked on talks. Paper, uh, yeah. talks, papers, we've done all sorts of stuff. Um, I, I, from my experience on the non-security side, I will say um, and, and this kind of applies to a lot of spaces. Um, a, it's okay to be wrong on both sides. Like it's okay for the security person to not understand what's going on in your domain, right? And it's okay for that person to be wrong about a statement, but it's also totally okay for the, for the, the subject matter expert in something to also be wrong about a security thing. 
and that's okay that's not something to like bash heads about that's not something to like stop talking to each other and end up not doing anything right um it it falls into my mentality of it's okay to be wrong um i think one of the things i hope one of the things that people will say with working with me is is that yes i might be a hard ass about something and be completely wrong but when someone presents me with the information that corrects it i'm like okay i'm wrong let's moving on right um it but doesn't like, that, always have to be it, about being right or wrong either right right um or like it anyway but the communication press piece is is very important um i think the other thing is um you know, a, a, a pet peeve of mine with working with security teams has been where they're brought into the conversation around strategy and forward thinking things, right? That conversation from a SME perspective needs to happen earlier. This goes right back to the later. like the dev, like DevSecOps no. shift left thing. It's just it's right. so true. It needs to happen, it needs to happen earlier. But at the same time, the InfoSec team also needs to have the bandwidth to have those strategy conversations, right? Because when you're when you're when you're when you're talking about like what a, like an example I can kind of give is that like I was before I left my previous job, one of the things that I spent like many months working on was re-architecting the network around. Uh, creating segments and partitioning traffic and stuff like that. But no one in the InfoSec team had the bandwidth to work with me on developing that plan. Right. And so it was really hard to build that early strategy building conversation because of the lack of bandwidth on the other side. Right. Um, yeah, and, and that's so probably a, a it, specifically organizational problem as well. Yeah, it, it totally is, but it's something to be aware of. Is that when when I would say for from a SME perspective, if an SME goes to a infosec person and says, "I have this great idea," it should be the answer should be like, "Okay, let's talk about this. Let's have a conversation." Not like whatever, because what will happen and SMEs love doing this, is that they'll just go and do it. And then it becomes bolt on security. And that's never fun. No, that's a that's a really good point. Um, I see that happen a lot in projects when like the last step is we have to get the security team's approval. And then it's like it's going live on Friday and it's like Wednesday afternoon, and the person's like, Well, who what? And then it's like now they're the bad guy because they have to be like because it's like when something bad happens, right? Like the security team's the one that's gonna get you know, the questioning from the management stuff. So I don't blame them in their things. That's a really good point. But I think what, uh, going back to the question though, about like, how do you work with them and build that relationship? Like these, you guys are all on the same team, right? Yeah. Like, it's not like some other group, like we all work for the same company and they have their own managers and maybe their manager's an asshole, just like maybe your manager's an asshole, right? Like depending on the organization. So they're people too. And I think the more you can align your stuff you're trying to do with their goals and their stuff that they're being measured on, the more likely they are to help you and like get it going on and, and things like that. Versus like when you're trying to do something that totally contradicts what their like metrics are and things like that, they're going to jam you up on stuff. So I think that's a good way to do that. And when you frame things that way and work with them, kind of going back to the previous question, when they have an opening in their team, they're going to want to get the person that they've been working with that clearly has a security mindset and has been helping them drive their goals. Like, oh yeah, we'll post this job, but like, let's talk to that person, like see if they're interested because they've been hanging around us for like the last six to 12 months and now we have an opening and like they might be a really good fit because they kind of get how our team works. So I think you have a good angle on that as well. But it's all about like, how do you align the thing you're trying to do with something else that's already working or going that direction that you can kind of like slip on with or like help them help you drive? Or, yeah, or to, that's a really uh, good point. To, to... I'm going to override you for a second. Um, actually, that re that kind of reminded me of something uh, Mr. Kate said earlier about like the, you know, um, security coming in and being like, you know, the, the idea that sometimes they come in and they want to, 
they, they impose something and then you have to like go back and, and rewrite a whole bunch of code that you were doing. So I'm kind of curious if you have any more um, thoughts on that. Um, so, I mean, for me, because it's coming down from Salesport force, there's really nothing I can do except guess what they're going to be doing. Um, but I was going to say, because I don't really interact with, with my company's uh, security team too often, um, what I try to do is I try to go to any presentations that they're giving the company, any talks that they're doing, try to prep questions. So they know who I am. So if I have to interact with them, they're like, okay, well, this person. <laughs> I, oh, I know this person. They ask good questions. They're not a complete idiot. Like, so just to, to kind of build that rapport uh, ahead of time. Um, so if and when, probably when more than if, I do need them, um, we can have a, a good collegial relationship. Yeah, I think that's really important. Um, so we're, I think I'm on about time for like how long I want this to last, but I'd like to go down the list and, and call everyone out and see if they had like, just a, a quick, you know, one minute snippet on um, any any advice they have for someone, especially anyone who is like, kind of maybe starting out in IT or interested in security, maybe not sure. Um, just any any kind of advice that like what to focus on or um, thoughts about um, what you know what their experience has been and that kind of thing. So basically, last thoughts, um, and I'll go ahead and start with the Bayox. Okay. Um... I'd focus on relationships and opportunities for personal growth. Um, that starting there, um, I think you could lead you to a lot of good places. Um, I'll keep it short and hopefully sweet. And uh, yeah, and just build those relationships because you, you never know um, what opportunities might present themselves over time. Um, and engage with the various teams as, as much as you can. And I know it can be particularly a challenge in today's world, um, but you know, hopefully over the next 10 months or so, things will slowly improve and um, you know, those opportunities won't be as challenging to find. Um, but yeah, seek them out and just engage. Cool, thank you. Uh, Tall Wireless? Um, I think it's totally fine for someone to exist in an SME role and be very security conscious without ever transitioning into security. I think that someone who lives in the SME world um, in a way has more influence and more power to train those around them to drive operational uh, change for better baseline security for things of that nature um, that you know people you don't you don't have to be on an infosec team to drive um, information like to drive information security policy or knowledge or or strategy um, I think a lot of the stuff that I've I've deployed have, has had huge security implications. And I am not an InfoSec person at all. So um, I, 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 I want to make sure that like people understand that it's totally okay to be in an SME position, a non-InfoSec SME position, be super interested in information security and never actually transition into an information security role. Awesome. You can do a lot of good in your current role. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Mark? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I agree with both the previous ones. I, the other thing, I'll, just, I'll say something a little bit different, but I think um, focusing on good fundamentals, like never is like never time wasted. <laughs> Like, I mean, really, I like, because people sometimes always jump into like, I want to learn this new, new hotness thing and all this stuff. Like, under, like we talk about like understanding networking at a really deep level, that's going to be super useful. Understanding a scripting language at a really deep level is, is super helpful. Like learning identity access, identity access management concepts, like just what is authentication versus authorization? Like that will always translate into other stuff. Like the good fundamentals will always translate into other stuff. 
So if you're looking to like go pick a skill up, figure out a skill where you feel like you're weak in a fundamental area and go focus on that. And another thing, like we said earlier, is good operations is good security. So like go find that thing that's been like nagging in your logs or that operational thing that you just don't understand. Like go figure it out and fix it. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kate? Also, your doggo is adorable. Yeah, apologies in advance if they start playing and, and barking because it's about to happen. <laughs> there you Good go. timing. <laughs> All right. Well, in uh, to take that to swap out, I'll uh, I'll go ahead. My personal last thoughts are um, I'm gonna just echo what um, I'll yeah I'll go ahead. Um, I'll just echo what, especially um, I think what Tal Wireless said, I think there's a lot of value and you bring a lot of value to um, to your team when you advocate for security, when you have that security mindset. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're all trying to accomplish um, the same goals. And that is like, you know, securing infrastructure, securing things for our users. Um, and and yeah, sometimes as the, as the part of a team, you have more power to do that than the security team actually does. So I'd, I'd say just don't be afraid to wield that and uh, and go explore things. All right, are we are we uh, barking? I, sh I shoved one out, so. <laughs> well, we're right at the end, so it's good timing. <laughs> yeah, uh, so. Um, no, I, I, for me, it's uh, specifically to, to what I know, like developing, it's about you want to make sure that you understand the basics of what you can do to make things more secure. Because if you care about security, you should be that should be baked into your work from from the start. Um, but I think another big thing is just admitting what you don't know <clears throat> and not being afraid to admit uh, what you don't know. Uh, but showing a willingness to to learn and a curiosity to learn new things is always good. Awesome. Very well said. Um, with that, I think we're pretty much done with the panel. So um, I'm going to invite everyone, as usual, to switch over to Discord and join us in the uh, Meet a Mentor Meetup channel. I'm probably going to grab another beer. It's been a long week, so might as well chill out, have happy hour. Uh, so I will see you all over there. Thank you so much to all of our panelists. This was a really awesome discussion, and uh, I really appreciate all of your, your advice and thoughts and wisdom. So cheers. See you over in Discord. Thank you. Brittany.